Uh, our next speaker, Pedro. Uh, thank you, Leila. I'm Pedro Vasconcelos from the International Fund for Agricultural Development. I don't know if many of you are aware or not, but to, as, to make it brief, basically it's an institution, a uh, special agency of the United Nations that deals with, uh, with development and particularly for rural areas in development of agriculture uh, areas. The reason why IFAD is doing, is doing remittances, as it was just mentioned by Leila, is this thing, this map here, I think, could help me understand it. As you can see, this is the estimate of remittances flow that was done last year by IFAD. The total amounts for more than 300 billion, uh, everybody's discussing if it's 318, 350. It's a lot of money in any case. And uh, one of the important facts for IFAD is the fact that 30 to 40 percent of that flow goes to rural areas. So it's hard sometimes to see well, what's the difference with rural areas or urban areas, remittances and remittances, yes. But I think in the point of what we're discussing today is to leverage the, the, remittance, the development impact of remittances. It's very, it's very important to understand that any single issue that you heard today or elsewhere about remittances, it's always multiplied by two, three, in any case, a, fa a positive factor when, uh, when uh, discussing or looking at the rural area. So this is actually the reason why IFAD is, uh, is so important, uh, um, for the topic is so important for IFAD. Since we're going to have another panel discussion uh, about other concepts, uh, I cut my presentation and would like to, given everything that was said today, to, to go to a specific question of, of leveraging remittances and what can be done. And uh, does any uh, stakeholder in this field has a concrete strategy or trying to do something? As it was mentioned before, uh, there's this aspect of paternalism. Uh, remittances were discovered 10 years ago by uh, developing institutions uh, when migrants have been doing this, have been sending remittances for some time now. But it was, dif uh, it was discovered and uh, definitely everybody wanted to do something about it and the idea was to that concept of having productive remittances. So from the start, we should understand productive have always been uh, productive basically and uh, the paternalistic approach of telling a migrant that I was in a way forced to leave his country to how to use his money it's something that only now 10 years after is is acknowledged and uh, at the end of the day the, there's a common consensus about how can we provide more options how we can serve more of this migrant their families and the, give him more options to use the money that is sending so at the end, what you can read here, for instance, is the more of a strategic approach. And it's a result of all the discussion, over 10 years of discussions, uh, is, uh, is this. So, and the idea is to increase the financial resources of who receive remittances in rural area. You can do that by many, in many ways. I'll, I'll explain how. But what, that's one of the strategic objectives. And the second is to improve the development and impact of remittances in rural areas. Basically, in this case, IFAD and many other development institutions follow the same trend, is what can, what can we do? And uh, the three main aspects is first is document. You need to know what you're, that, what you're talking about. Uh, this is why it's so important. Sometimes there's the question, where are we wasting money and time to try to understand the flow? Information is key. Uh, if you need to understand the market, if you want to enter a market or now, we're talking about money transfer companies, banks, and so on, you need to know what you're looking into. So, and as it was said today, the information about remittances for a very long time, and it still is inaccurate in many cases. So one, is, one of the, the goals is to document and improve the, the, the remittances flows, and the other is improve access to low-cost remittances. For many years, the cost was an issue. Uh, right now, it's not really a, a global issue. In some, st in some areas, that's still the case, but overall, it's not. Uh, but there's more a problem of access, remittances services, and in, in rural areas that's still a very important aspect. And the number two is when you do have that, what can you do? There's a lot of microfinance institutions that we just discussed uh, an hour ago, is how can we tap into this market? Is there a linkage that is possible? And indeed there is one. Uh, there's commercial banks also involved in this. And this intermediation is one of the aspects that, uh, that can be pushed and, and promoted. <laughs> Number three, uh, develop innovative and productive rural investment channels uh, for migrant-based organizations. 
And this is one of maybe the least understood uh, mechanism by developing institutions in order to, 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 to provide, in the approach normally is to provide help to this phenomenon of migrants in their home countries doing something for, uh, in the host countries, doing something for their home countries. And the attitude is how can we help that? Uh, through test and, or, and trial and error, uh, I believe that some good initiatives have, have come out of that and may, much of that was discussed today. I think Jogo will discuss uh, as well. He has very good points on that. But the idea is not only for the migrant organizations, for the migrant itself. And what take us to the point num that the, the previous point number two is to provide them also with more uh, options to invest as a, com as a community, as an individual. And this mechanism in many cases, in many developing countries, just do not exist. So this is one of the, the points to see. In reference to this one, two, three, I'll just start uh, maybe providing a couple of examples of what we mean by this. In the number one, access to remittances, EFAD is also, la also launched, well, every year launches a call for proposals in order s for small projects, but in order to promote the development and, and the testing of uh, innovative mechanisms to receive remittances or to link these remittances to existing financial services. So as you can see, the specific objectives of, of this call, of this program, through project financing or uh, dissemination or awareness creation is to promote that. Uh, we talked so oftentimes um, the word mobile banking to solve all the problems. He said uh, there's many like that, many, many opportunities, but uh, concrete cases that can be disseminated that could serve actually as an example to others to follow uh, are still lacking. Some things that can be done for a specific market sometimes cannot, done for, cannot be done for the neighboring country because they're not well understood, because there's maybe there's an infrastructure issue that just allows you to do that. The problem in, uh, normally people try to regionalize these issues. So for some cases it can be true, but for others it's not really the, the case. Some issues in Latin America are not the issues in Africa or Asia. But however, some of the infrastructure issues, for instance, to do mobile banking seem evident. And that is a problem. So regulation is another is a uh, is another issue. I think I'll discuss this in the next in the next panel to to understand that what issues need to be tapped and from what stakeholder in order to create a, just a better uh, an enabling environment for remittances. On the on the next point that I mentioned first was the creation and actually allowing remittances to 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 happen. And when they do, how can you leverage this by linking them with the existing financial sector? And uh, as you can see, this is one of specific objectives as well. And on, con on concrete basis, what are we talking about? You're a microfinance institution and you heard all the benefits about remittances. Okay, what does it take for me to offer that service? Uh, it was discussed a little bit previously, but in many cases, the microfinance institution lack specific a manual, let's say, uh, about how to do that. Uh, there's many other institutions that are trying to help, like CGAP, in providing manuals and, and technical assistance in that. But there's still a lot to do in that area. And in, for this, with this program, it's just a grain of salt. But with this program, we're also trying to, to do that. And it's trying to provide existing financial institutions the understanding on how they can benefit from remittances. It's not the idea, well, you should provide your remittances because it's good for, for your clients. Is there, there's a business behind it, and you can capture many more clients. And this is the same story that goes for commercial banks. There's the political word about corporate social responsibility, but behind that is just marketing, basically, and, and profit. And do not ask a for-profit institution to, to work for other reasons, other purposes than for profit. But if there's a market opportunity, a profit opportunity, they should. And for remittances, there is. Um, in many developing countries, in Europe or in the United States, you can see that, that change. Over the last 10 years, commercial banks were not interested. Now they're, they're, they're fighting. Uh, and it's very aggressive to try to tap into this market. So this is what, what, uh, what is also trying to be promoted, the interna in the financial intermediation. In